What is up, Earthnoids and Space Noids? I am just a simple new type. And in this episode, we are diving back into the world of FSS as we cover MSVR Return of Johnny Ryden. Last time, the team learned about a goof with a custom dot that is similar to the core block system. Jacoby has fought against Uma Lightning, and everyone seemed to be looking for something called Minaret. In this episode, Led will pilot a new core booster. We will learn a little bit about Remia's past, and Led will fight against another Johnny Ryden. So let's get into this. A woman going by the name of Johnny Ryden is monitoring the fight against Jacobius and Uma. She tells her men to have a Garuda class ship flying above them fire down on the two's coordinates. Before she leaves, she tells the man to tell Gop that if they give her a boring mission again, she is going to put a foot in their ass. Jacobius gets a missile alert. Uma yells at him, but Jacobius says the missiles isn't him. One of Jacobius's men tell him about the Garuda flying above them. He realizes that someone else besides Uma is stalking him. He makes his escape during the chaos. The minaret seems to be too big to move without people noticing. He wonders how Oxner is going to handle the situation. Uma and his remaining men head out into space and let the rest of the team know that he is certain Minaret is at Jaburo. Meanwhile in Side 5, a ship in the San Domingo and a squad of GMs are taking care of some Neo Zeon remnants. Suddenly, a group of three Galgoogs come in and destroy both the GMs and the San Domingo. They have the markings of the Chimera Corps. One of the pilot Siemens goes on a rant about how baking is an honorable profession. Emma is his wife and Cristobal wonders if destroying too many fleets in Side 5 will bring attention to them. Emma thinks Uma saw Johnny Raiden while on Earth, but she thinks that he is dead. They all agree that he died when they began working with Oxner. Meanwhile at FSS, Led is bored and waiting for his next investigation. At Earth Federation's 72nd Experimental Test Area, a young girl is wandering around. Rimia asks Bob where Led is. Of course, he has taken a break. She goes over the data as she is excited to test something that was supposed to be a part of Operation V. They are testing the Core Booster Plan 4, the FFX-7 BST Plan Plan 4 Core Booster Plan 4 is a prototype fighter and one of the test beds for the Core Booster concept. It has atmospheric and spaceflight capabilities. The Core Block system was deemed to be too expensive to mass produce, but they wanted to do something with the Core Fighter. The Core Booster is a result of that. This is a Core Fighter with a giant booster attached to it. The unit is equipped with two 25mm Vulcans, four micro missiles, 25mm machine guns which function with the Vulcans to increase firepower, and a two megaparticle cannon. This will eventually be designed into the core booster that we know and love. The core block system was expensive and contained the fancy new learning computer for the time. Also, EFF is really, really cheap and needed to recoup the cost somehow. Remia looks up and sees a piece of debris fall to Earth. During the one-year war, there is an absurd amount of junk around the Earth's sphere. Sometimes giant pieces of debris enter Earth's atmosphere. There are defense systems in place that will shoot it down if it calculates that it will hit civilians. In this case, it hits the desert and no action was taken. Remia asks Bob what he was doing during the one-year war. He was in college. Rimia was still just a little kid, but she says that it certainly did change her world. Little by little, her friends and their family began disappearing. They evacuated or were considered enemies of the state. Her school lesson became more and more about history that suggests the Federation are the bad guys. Her father joined the front lines, and she ended up at a boarding school with her sister. On the last day of the war, an air siren went off on side three. Go check out our coverage of the plot to assassinate Giren to see why. After the war, their dad was declared missing in action. She ended up with a foster family and moved forward in life, but she still wonders what was the monster called the One Year War. That is when Led walks in wondering what they are talking about. He refers to himself as an ace pilot, and Rimia gives him a look. He says that he isn't Johnny Ryden. He's been noticing those looks that she's been giving him. Led asks when the core booster will be ready to fly. She says the day after tomorrow. Led is bored just waiting around. The mysterious girl looks on. She says her mobile suit is almost ready. Led says that this core fighter, at its heart, was designed to keep someone alive. Amado Ray should probably thank surviving the one-year war to the fact that this core fighter exists. It is also the reason why this project costs so much money. He says that the core fighter is someone trying to find light in the darkness. As long as people like this exist, man can take on any monster, even one such as the one-year war. Remia realizes that Led was listening to her conversation. He tells her to shut up out of embarrassment. The team performs some pre-checks. Led is in the cockpit. He asks Remia why is the unit red. She says that during the Great War, there was a red unit called the Red Baron who painted their plane red to bring them glory. He reminds her he is not Johnny Ryden. Lead takes off. While running tests, the command center loses contact. Minoski density is high and laser comms are being blocked, but they saw a fast object approaching Lead before communication went down. 
Lead dodges some missiles. A red gap plant approaches him, rocking the unicorn emblem. The gap plant pilot introduces herself as Johnny Ryden. She always wanted to meet him. After continuously telling Remia he isn't Johnny Ryden, another person comes in claiming that Lead is Johnny. Good luck explaining that to Remia. He is able to outmaneuver her mobile suit. He drops below the clouds and establishes a connection with Remia. He asks her to collect all the weather data in a 200 kilometer radius. He also informs her of the red gap plant. This makes Remia think of the Xeon branded Hotto that she found. Johnny Ryden wants to know if Johnny Ryden is Johnny Ryden because if he is Johnny Ryden, then Johnny Ryden isn't Johnny Ryden. What? Led is also confused. She tells Led about a beast that lost its master during the One Year War with power and intelligence. A man comes in and gives the power of the beast to his friends. Led wonders what this story has to do with anything. She says that Johnny wouldn't say something like that, but Led thought that she was fighting Johnny and is still confused. He says that she should run back to her parents. Led uses the boosters, but the gap plant is able to keep pace. Rimia is going to be mad at Led for what he does next. He ejects the core booster from the core fighter and it crashes directly into the gap plant. She also happens to shoot off her beam cannon, clipping part of the core fighter. The core fighter is down. The gap plant can no longer transform and is also going down. Lead crash lands into somewhere around an environmental improvement plant. He knows that Remia is going to be very pissed and kind of doesn't want to go back to FSS now. Lead notes that everything on Earth sure does always look pristine. Artificial improvement plants are artificial islands designed to help the Earth heal after the damage of the One Year War. These islands can absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen into the atmosphere. Meanwhile, the girl calling herself Johnny Ryden also crash lands. She grabs a bug out bag and a distress signal, but she stops and wonders if she should use this opportunity to get away from old man Gop. She is mad that she doesn't even know her real name. Bob tells Remia about the improvement plants and how many were destroyed during the colony drop. They pick up a distress signal and the rescue team heads out. Remia decides to join them. Gop was informed that the girl was shot down. They refer to her as Ingrid Zero. He tells his men to get a Garuda ready for him. He then contacts a Brigadier General Mishima requesting his strength to help retrieve Ingrid Zero. He informs them that there may be an enemy involved and it may be Chimera. Uma Lightning and his men are testing a beam rifle. They are pretending to be a test squad while at Jaburo and the fight with Jacobius has already raised suspicion. They suddenly get a call and are informed that Johnny Ryden has been shot down. Uma says screw it and decides to go out and try to rescue Ryden even though he just told his men not to act suspicious. He says if they have to, they will just give Anaheim a call. At Themis, Jacobius is handling some paperwork. One of his men comes in and catches him up on the situation. He is informed that Lead and Ingrid Zero are shot down and that Gop has started to make moves to retrieve the two. They are still unsure of Uma's moves in all of this. He says to get a squad moving as well. He will move out if he has to. Oxner is also being caught up. He also knows of Themis's movements. He is playing with a Rubik's Cube. They say their concern should be with Remia. More specifically, the Hotto that Remia is trying to access. It happens to contain leaked data that Oxner doesn't want getting out. She says deal with the owner of the Hotto as she chooses. Oxner finishes the Rubik's Cube, forming a unicorn. He says this is a four-way battle. He places it next to three other cubes. A Chimera, a Cerberus, and a Snake. Both Uma Lightning and Jacobius also make their way towards Lead and Ingrid Zero. FSS loads up a G-Fighter Assault Landing type. More on this unit next video. Remia joins the team very worried about lead. And that will do it for this episode. We learn of Remia's past and that she was actually around during the events of the plot to assassinate Giren. We learn that the core booster was built because surprise surprise, EFF is very cheap. In the next episode, we will learn more about the G-Fighter assault landing type. We will also learn about the Gelgoog high mobility R type and Lead will run into Little Johnny while waiting to be rescued. But that will do it for now, new types. Remember, if you find a Hotto, make sure to reformat it. You never know what data is on those things. Peace.